Okay, in this video we'll be showing how to set up a produced and consumed tag structure uh, from scratch and we'll, we'll show a, uh, the communications path and how to set that up as well and then show the working data being transferred from processor to processor. Now this will be done but with a virtual chassis with a RS Logix emulator 5000. So I have the processor slots already put in. Uh, slot 0 and slot 1 and I have uh, two programs already pre-made program 1 and program 2 and they're named pro uh, produce consumed program 1 produce and consumed program 2 so we'll open up program 1 and I have a custom UDT that I've made it shows the data that I want to transfer you don't have to do that that's just something I like to do to to set up in case I, I want to have more options later and again I, I put a little um, description in there what it does so that's the data we'll, we'll be using so in program one we want to go in and, and uh, first off you want to make sure you, you go to your IO configuration you want to go to backplane and you want to add in the other processor so right click Select module, and you go to controller. And we're using emulator, so I'm going to use the emulator process or, or, or controller. I'm on version 20, and then I want to name it the same as my uh, program that I'm, I'm talking to, or I'm going to be communicating to, which is produce consume program. And this is going to be in slot 0 or slot 1 because program 1 is in slot 0. So now that that's in there, I'll go to program 2 and do the same thing. So again, in IO configuration, uh, go to your back plane, right click it, add module, go to controller, add your emulator controller version 20 at this point we're going to be adding uh, the first program which is produced so produce consume program one and that's the slot zero so so now that we have our, our communication set up in our I.O. tree, we want to go to Edit. Let's go to Program 1. Let's go to Edit. And we want to add our tags. So I like to, to start off by showing an, um, the, the processor that I'm talking from to the processor I'm talking to, and the vice versa on the consume side. So this would be Program One, two, program two, and then under data struct or data type, I want to I want to use my data, my custom UDT. And now that that's made, I'll do one that's going to be consuming the data from the other processor, which is program two, two, program. One. It would help if I spelled it correctly, but yes. Okay, so now we use the same data type. So, and at that point, the tags are made, but I want to go ahead and set them up for actual produce or, or consume. So, program one, being we're in program one, two program two is the produce. So, go to edit, then under the type, I'm going to do produce, the connection, and then select apply. Now slightly different on the consumed data coming from program 2 to program 1, we want to actually go to edit, change the type from base to consume, the connection we want to uh, select our producer which is going to be what we set up in our IO tree so in the producer you select the
the other processor. You select the data that is going to be coming, uh, the tag that it's actually going to be reading. So program two to program one, so, because this is going to be being sent from program two to program one. Select apply. So the tags are made at that point. And we want to do the same thing in program two. So again, go to edit tags. We'll go pro program two to program one. And I like to do that again to tell who I'm talking from, which is program two to program one. And then I, I select my data type, which is again the, my custom UDP. And then I'll select the consumed data, which is program one, two, program two, and then select your your data type again. Once that's done, this is program two. So in program two, that needs to be the producer. So again, under you right click, hit edit, and under type you do, uh, you change it from base to producer, select apply. In the program one to program two, being that we're in program two, this is the data coming from program one to program two. This is a consume tag, so you want to change the type to consume. Go to connection, select your producer again, which is program one. We have it in our IO tree, and the exact tag that is coming or that we're, we're pointing to. So program one, two, program. And it's very important that the spelling is right, or else you won't, it will not work. Select apply. At this point, we have our, our IO communication set up. We have our tags set up in both processors. And then we'll download. So now I'm in program one. Program one is in slot zero. I download it to slot zero and as long as everything is fine with uh, what you've done you will not see any triangles or any caution symbols in either one of these they should show that they're running everything is fine let's go to program two and do the same thing and in program two it's in slot uh, one, so we want to download to slot one this time. And again, you would you would have seen some caution symbols, or or you would have seen a um, you know a triangle right here that, that says you know it stated that that a connection failed uh, with what you set up already. So now that everything's working. Um, to show that it works, we can go to program one, and so this would be the data going out to program two. We can select the flag. Um, let's do this and let's go to the same spot. So program one to program two and to program two, um, and show that there's all zeros in all of them. And then we'll just go back to program one and, and input data into it. Just to show that, yeah, this is a bull, so I can't do but a one or a zero. So, okay, so that's program one. The same data should be in program two as well, and it is. And I can't write over this in program two because it's being wrote over by program one. So that data is being uh, constantly written over. So it's 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 actually something that's being uh, controlled from the other processor at this point. 
prove that out, we'll go back and I've added a, a free running timer. What I'll do with this is just show that the data working in real time is I'll add a move in instruction and I'll move the, the data coming from timer one so it's timer one it, <coughs> you want to use the accumulated value and then we'll go to this is processor one so our program one so program one is a produce over and then we'll select a dent we'll use dent zero and then so that the data that's coming from timer one accumulator accumulation should be filling in and transmitting data to uh, pro from program one to program two so now that that's working we'll go back to program two and we'll look at the data coming in the dents and you'll see that that's, that's steadily populating. Now we can do the same thing from program 2 which we're not sending any data right now so if you look in program 1 we're not sending any data if we look at the, uh, the tag database the data we're sending over but we're not getting anything from program 2 so if we go back to program 2 add the same timer over there so we'll add that real quick and we'll just do a move and we'll move timer value from program so this is program 2 so it's got to be from program 2 and the same dent when I, let's just use 1 to show a difference and so it's now sh moving the data from timer 1 into to that uh, produce tag so let's go to go to program one and see what it's doing in program one so program one is now showing data so not only is program two so if you look we use dent zero in program one program two is using dent one that shows that both of them are transmitting data so at this point everything is set up a hundred percent you can actually start programming whatever you wanted to to transmission from one process to another process or from an, one controller to another controller and uh, talk to a hundred percent of what you need to and this is why I make a custom data uh, data type so that I have 20 floats which is 20 reels I have 20 dents which you, you know you can use those for whatever you would like I have 20 flags and the flags I chose bulls so they're either going to be a 1 or 0 I did 96 of those and again that, that's just something that I like to do to, to give myself options so you, you never know you don't want to run out of, out of uh, limits or time or, or space or whatever and have to go because you can't change this unless you download so with all that working um, I'd just like to say thank you for watching the video and um, you know we have a couple more videos that uh, show other stuff so just uh, just stay tuned and we'll have more stuff coming out and thank you for your time all right